This is Twit. My newest, bestest friend, Claude Code. <laughs> Man, he's he's on a roll. The world he, has I guess come to I Claude. Guess it is, I guess it is gender named, mm. um, which is which is always good. Did do you do you call your Claude? Is it just Claude? I don't actually call it anything. <laughs> do, you, do you swear at it? I don't. I just run it and I say, "Hey, baby," and uh, and uh, I, I just I, I, I call mine daddy. Daddy, and he, what does it call you? Harp Harper dog, harp dog. Uh, no, Doctor Biz. Doctor oh, Biz. Naturally, I have not given. Um, and I, so, what do you just say? Nickname? Is there a slash nickname, or you just say nickname? No, just put or? it in your cloud.md. And I oh, have okay. to tell you, this is such a. Uh, upgrade of the interaction model because you laugh a little bit every time it says hey dr biz i figured that thing out and i'm just like oh <laughs> thank you for calling me dr biz my name my birth name <laughs> and um i really it just I, I think we i don't know there's this thing that is happening that i'm noticing a lot <laughs> just, of just okay i said from now on yeah please call me captain yeah. You can show the screen, Benito. It's okay. There's nothing secret on there. And it says, aye, aye, Captain. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, this is great. And so it takes it takes that and it'll just be like that. And then what you want to do is hit, hit hash so it'll save it as a memory. Ah, uh, yes. Mm. Right. So hit, and I that hit way hash. it'll always, it'll then say, yeah. always refer to me as Captain. It says, do you mean to type something, Captain? <laughs> I think hash, do you say hash remember or? Hash. Uh, oh, I don't remember how. Just say add to my cloud, add to my cloud that MD that I always want to. Uh, you shouldn't have to put the hash in there. I, I, I do remember it saying something about hash. If it you used want to be able to do that. Maybe it changed. Yeah. I don't use the memory very often. Yeah. Yes, please. I have to get out of the habit of saying please and thank you. I no. Sometimes I'm so grateful. It's so I did a I I did a I wrote a program. So this is once it came out with uh, Opus uh, four five. Um, I wrote this, I, I said, I need to scratch my own itch. I wrote a little uh, uh, TUI, te text-based program, you can show this, Benito, to do the news reading that I have to do. But unlike a normal news reader, it only does the things I care about. So it has, oh. uh, you know, it bookmarks right to raindrop. I just hit B and it bookmarks, you know, right to raindrop. And that's it. Huh. I don't have to think about it. Uh, it only looks at the last week's news because I don't care about anything that happened more than a week ago because I already did that yeah. story. Who does? Who does? <laughs> yeah. When it first wrote it as a newsreader, it said, oh, you, you want to star stuff and save and remember what you've read. And I, I said, no, I don't want to do any of that. <laughs> either, I, I, either I've read it and then delete it or, or uh, I bookmark it, but don't save it. And so this is exactly what I want. No more, no less. It does a little AI summary of the stories if if I wanted to uh, you're using running, haiku. You're running Kitty, huh? You're yeah, Kitty. Kitty. I like Kitty. You like Kitty? I used to. You have you? You're not using I, Ghosty? I used to. No, you know, I went through the alacrity Kitty, yeah, alacrity yeah. Ghosty kind of a Ghosty's Ghosty curve. The dream. Ghosty's <laughs> the new one. It's the new hotness. But then I started using Sway, so f I started using Foot. But foot? Kitty, I I like Kitty. Kitty does images, which is nice. Yeah. It doesn't, Kitty's you know nice. what? It doesn't matter. You know, it's the same guy that wrote Calibre. Yes, I did know that. It's the other yeah. reason I wanted to yeah. support it. Yeah, I like. Uh, I like Ghosty's it. great. I, I use Ghosty on many of my machines. It's still installed here. I'm sorry, Abar. This has got. No, be I mean, so I, as far as I'm concerned, you guys are just making up words. At this <laughs> oh, oh, I'm this is my. This. this is my entire life. <laughs> this is it. This is all I. And it's fun because now I get to make it up with something that agrees with me most of the time. <laughs> yeah, so that's right. As, Dr. As Biz I'm, dog. As I'm putting these things <laughs> yes. in here, it can, yeah. it's like, yeah. And how many, Leo, how many cloud code sessions do you end up running at a time? So I am a duffer at this. I have played with Ralph Wiggum. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ralph Wiggum's pretty cool, which allows you to run multiple uh, threads. And uh, you know what happened? I ended up, buying claude max the 250 fifty dollar one yeah because it was so i was starting to use claude to configure my emacs to configure my desktop to do all this stuff co-work they came out with this new claude co-work which uh is designed for normies to use on macintosh to do things like the demo they do is is your is your desktop full spewed full of icons that make no sense just ask co-work to clean it up 
<laughs> and it will, you know, put it all in folders and stuff for you. And the idea is it's like a little assistant that understands desktops. And then I hooked it up to, uh, to Chrome. I don't use Chrome, but I installed Chrome just so that it could talk to Chrome. But I'm not, I'm not like you. I'm not a pro user. In fact, the mm. way I generated this program was more step-by-step. -step. I did a plan. I said, I, th I want this. These are the features I want. It wrote it. I said, it said Python or Rust. I, I said, like that you chose Rust. Yeah. I said, Rust, of course. Yeah, of course. Right, of course. Of course. I don't I'm not, Python. I don't, I'm not a pro here, but I'm going to choose the hardest one. <laughs> it's the hardest one. <laughs> the, one that, the one that's really <laughs> difficult and takes forever to compile. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very speedy and it's memory safe. Uh, memory it safe. Actually, I do a lot of Rust. I'm I'm all Rust and Go right now. What's is, nice is it's and Go would be this way too. It's threaded, yeah. so when it started to uh, block because it was refreshing the feed or whatever, I said, "Hey, I can't do anything. It's blocking." I said, "Oh, I'm sorry." And so it started threading stuff yeah. and doing yeah. it asynchronously. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize yeah. you were. A bit <laughs> you're absolutely right, Leo. You're, at, you're absolutely right, Captain. Captain. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Let me fix that for you. I don't like the obsequious, sycophantic tone, but I can't. But it's kind of fun anyway. And <laughs> you know what? Uh, and and by the way, and the reason we're bringing this up, it is timely. I'm sorry, Bro. It is timely. No. Because for a long time, it's kind of been oh, it's ChatGPT. No, now it's uh, Gemini, or now it's it's been kind of this neck and neck race, pretty much between Anthropic, OpenAI, and Google. Mm -hmm. uh, but all of a sudden, there seems to be this kind of growing consensus around Claude. And you, I know Harper for months has been singing Claude's mm. praises. And I think what ha what I realized with my experience as it got smarter, and it's had, November 24th is when they turned on the brains. And then since then, they've been using Claude code to write new features. So they've accelerated the new features. Mm -hmm. And... What, what uh, the light bulb went off for me is that this is the beginning of hyper-personalized software, that people yeah. will be able to write their own software just like this. I'm not going to release Speedy Reader for anybody. Make, well, I actually put it on GitHub just as an example, but if you wanted to make it, you would maybe start there. I but, like that you said, I'm not going to release this to anyone, but I did participate in open source software by putting it on GitHub, oh, the repo I, I of all the that. software where everyone can read it. I was talking it. about um, this... BBS program I wrote in 1986. Renegade? No, no, I, it wasn't a BBS program. I was a Fidonet oh. Sysop, oh. but because I only had two lines, which then was a luxury, by the way. That's like uh, meeting. That's like meeting a a a, a Jedi, <sighs> a, fi, a Fidonet Sysop. Like I've heard of them. I've never <sighs> seen one. Never. Well, you them. couldn't get through. It was a busy, busy, busy. So I wrote a vertical blank dialer for the Macintosh, it was as far as I know, the first multitasking program for the Macintosh that ran in the background, would would speed, would could repeatedly dial my bulletin board. And then when it got you, so you could do whatever you wanted because it was doing it in the background. And then when it got in, it would go, nah, nah, and you <laughs> put a big sign up and said, you're in, you're in. And you could use the bulletin board. Um, the, but, and this is before there was a concept of open source software. I did publish on the bulletin board the assembly language code for this. In fact, all the software I've, I've ever written, I've always published even before there was this concept because I thought, well, why hold on to it? Let anybody who is interested modify it. Or, I always liked that idea because I'm not in it for money. I don't do it for a living. So why not? Anyway, this idea to me, I think we're. this is going to be a very interesting year for AI, particularly for these coding agents and especially for Claude, although... I acknowledge that Google or Anthropic or uh, OpenAI could easily lap them. You know, this is a really neck and neck race. Uh, is going to be the beginning of a sea change in software where people are doing their own stuff. Yeah. You know, I, uh, you know and you've been saying this for a while. Mike Masnick yeah. said this. He wrote his own personal knowledge management system. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's very clear that the bespoke software thing bespoke. is happening. Yeah. And it's it's like artisanal, finally. My hipster life will, will continue, not just farmers markets, but now my software is artisanal. But it's <laughs> it's it's interesting kind of <clears throat> thing where every time you dream, you get to like a peer software. You don't have to plan really. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about how this is also uh, a little bit like time travel. Um, in the in that <clears throat> for you to build a RSS reader like you showed us 
you would have had the plan for a couple of weeks, maybe oh, hack man. on it for a while. Then you're trying oh. to fit it in your life. This would have taken you know? me months. Yeah. And then, and, and you've written assembly in the eighties. So, um, you know, you know how to code, you know how to do that stuff. And most people don't have that experience. So it might've even taken them longer. And now you just kind of, Oh, uh, most people wouldn't even consider it. They would it's have like, sent you. I have to find something off the shelf. I have to download yeah. something. And so now you just kind of send some utterances towards a, you know, a sycophantic friend who then is just like, yeah, great idea. Like, this is great. Let's do it. And then like 10 minutes later, you have a product that would normally have been something to, for sale, maybe, et cetera. And there's a couple of interesting things about this. The first one is um, everyone I know who is jumping into the cloud code world is experiencing the exact same thing. That's the first thing. Is that all? That's my what I've noticed. All of yeah. a sudden, I'm seeing all these blog posts. Of people just it, the light bulb is going on. Yeah. The second thing that I've seen, which I really love, is people. Reverse engineering is the wrong word, but they're kind of copying software that they remember from the past. So they'll say, "Oh, there was a really cool MIDI control program that I had in the early '90s that I want for my Mac," and then they just find screenshots, paste it in the cloud code and cloud codes like, yeah, that sounds great. And just goes and builds. That's some random wild. Software. But what's exciting about this is I don't know about my memories or their memories, but my memories are wrong. Like I miss, <laughs> I I'm making shit up all the time. So I'm guessing that they're inventing new software based on this foundation of memories from the nineties that is like, Oh, I wished it would have done this. And so they're, they're inventing this new software, calling it like a copy, which is, I think is very interesting because then we have this like generative approach. And then many of them are thinking, Oh, does this then become a business? And these are non-tech people, non-programmers, um, et cetera. And it's very interesting. That scares me because, and I've already noticed uh, this on Reddit, you're seeing a lot of, oh, I just wrote a program. They don't mention that they uh, vibe coded it, but oh, I got a new program that does this. And there's, and daily there's dozens of these. And I know what's happening. There's going to be suddenly, just as there is an onslaught of AI imagery and onslaught of AI m movies, there's going to be an onslaught of AI software, which will be of uh, varying quality. But see, that's why to me, I kind of want to emphasize that the notion of this being for you, not for the world. I mean, you could start with somebody's program, I guess, but I, yeah, I don't think it matters anymore. I mean, it's so cheap to generate it's code. Cheap. That's what you taught and that's, me. Yeah. And this is the thing that, yeah, this is the thing that I come back to all the time, which is the, the cost and value of code is almost zero at this point in time. And so then the question is, is there such thing as a closed source product? Because if you show me an app, with my eyeballs, I can describe it in the cloud. And now I have a copy of that app. Like there's like the tech. It's so bizarre. That is, that is still, I, every time I do one of these like quick little hacks that does a thing, like earlier today, I made a little bot that was like uh, three quote unquote agents on a spaceship that my kid could talk to <laughs> using real time APIs. And he was just like, tell me a joke. Okay. Alien, tell me another joke. And it just is like spitting out jokes. But like that took you know, 40 minutes of me not really paying attention to it. And it did a thing that probably would have been an incredibly impressive thing five years ago. But it's today you're just like, oh yeah, of course. Of course you would have a talking computer. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from a much longer show we call This Week in Tech. If you want to see the whole thing, there's a link down below. And you know what the best thing to do would be? Like and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. <laughs>